What's up gamers? The Nintendo Switch emulation scene just got shaken up because the Nintendo Homebrew 1 emulator Citron is officially back. After all the drama, the bans, and even the rise of rival emulators like Eden, Citron has made a surprising comeback with a massive new update. And trust me, this one changes everything. For months, it looked like Citron was done. The project was buried under community backlash, drama, and the sudden rise of Eden as its replacement. Most people thought it was the end of the road, but out of nowhere, developer Zephron dropped Citroen version 0.7, and instead of a small patch, it's a complete ground-up rewrite of the emulator. Zephron claims this is 100% original work with no AI assistance, a fresh start meant to restore confidence and prove Citroen still has life left in it. And honestly, this is one of the boldest comebacks we've seen in the emulation space. So what makes this update special? Pretty much everything. The Vulkan rendering pipeline has been fully overhauled. GPU memory integration has been advanced and Nintendo SDK crash detection now includes a recovery system. Performance has been optimized across the board. Vulkan Turbo Mode has adaptive auto disable and new instruction implementations with a shader recompiler are in place. Let's check out the emulation and see what's new in the Citroen V0.7 update, starting from the very beginning of the installation. Citroen is available on their official website and GitHub repository, with releases for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. After installation, you'll notice that the interface looks very similar to before nothing drastically changed at first glance. You'll still need to go through the welcome notes, install the keys, and add your game directory. Now we're inside the Citroen game library. Disclaimer, the emulator itself is legal, but using illegal ROMs is not. I do not support or provide access to pirated games. Please use legal copies for your own safety. One small but useful addition is a new button that lets you switch between list view and grid view, heading into the settings menu. Then select advanced settings in the system tab, things look familiar. The usual options are still there. I recommend turning off the limit speed options. If you enable docked mode, it will increase the resolution but might reduce performance. Moving over to graphics settings, keep CPU accuracy set to normal. You can set the resolution to 4x, but I suggest using 1x. For V-Sync mode, I recommend using immediate, which basically means it's turned off. Leave window binary at default by linear. For anti-aliasing method, set it to FXAA. Set anisotropic filtering to 2x. In aspect ratio, choose stretch to window for maximum display coverage. We finally see some real changes. First, FSR 2.0 quality mode, which boosts image quality while keeping performance steady. And second, Picture-in-Picture -picture mode, something we've already seen in Eden Emulator that lets the window stay minimized while the emulator keeps running in the background. As for the audio and debug tabs, nothing new to report. They're the same as before. Another big feature introduced is the new Game Changer tool called ZepZone. It feels quite similar to Eden's Eden Valley. ZepZone allows customization of memory layout, ASTC texture settings, advanced graphics options, and frame skipping. However, since it's still experimental, Performance may not be stable yet. Next, head back to the main settings menu, where you'll find an option to install custom GPU drivers. By default, the emulator selects your device's GPU driver, but you can install a custom one for better performance. Unfortunately, non-Snapdragon users can't access this feature and must rely on default settings. Of course, no comeback is perfect. The devs warn that because this is a complete rewrite, Users should expect bumps along the way, things like game compatibility regressions, performance inconsistencies, memory leaks, and audio sync issues. And while Fidelity FX Super Resolution 2, FSR2, is included, it's still experimental, so you might see visual glitches, inconsistent frame rates, or even crashes. At the end of the day, Citron isn't dead, it's back stronger with its biggest update yet. And that's huge, because now Eden has real competition. This rivalry pushes both emulators to improve faster, innovate harder, and give us better performance and features. Whether you prefer Eden or Citron, one thing's clear. This comeback could be the best thing to happen for Nintendo Switch emulation.